ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇಹ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧಾ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪಾದ ಸಹಧನ ಲಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾಂಗಿತಾಂಶ್ಚ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣ ಸಿಂಧು ದೀನಬಂಧು ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಕೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾ ಕಾಂತ ನಮೋಸ್ತೆ ತಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗಿ ರಾಧೆ ಬೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ಶುಭಾನುಶ್ರೀಧೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಾಮಿ ಹರಿ ವಾಂಚಾಕಲ್ಪಿತ ರುಭ್ಯಶ್ಚ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯತೀತಾಂ ಪಾವನೇಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜೈ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧಾರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸ ಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಮೋಕಂ ಕರೋತಿ ವಾಚಾಲಂ ಪಂಗುಂ ಲಂಗಾಯಿತೆ ಗಿರಿ ಗ್ಲೋರಿಫೈಂಗ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ and uh, uh, glories of directly worshiping krishna so last section like last two sections are primarily pivoting on the position of krishna as krishna is the supreme object of worship and then we discussed about demigod worship and you know worship in krishna and now we are discussing this last section which is the glories of worship in krishna directly fine i'll read the verse you can also read with me can on you can do <clears throat> samoham sarva bhuteshu samoham sarva bhuteshu ಸಮೋಹಂ ಸರ್ವೂತೇಶು ಸಮೋ ಸಮ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ i am equal to equally disposed aham means me krishna is speaking this samoham sarva bhuteshu to all living entities i am equal to everyone name dvesho asti na priya dvesha means hate na me means i am never hateful to anyone asti na priya means no one is dear to me as well. I mean, I'm neutral to everyone. But, ye bhajanti tu maam bhaktya. Ye bhajanti tu maam bhaktya means whoever bhajanti means whoever performs devotion service tu maam to me bhaktya with bhakti, with devotion. Maite teshu chapya ha. They are in me, such persons. um uh, please read mataji mm. i envy no one no am i partial to anyone i am equal to all but whoever renders service unto me in devotion is a friend is in me and i am also a friend to him mm. it is like suppose a mother has five children and say you know 
three of them are very naughty they never listen to the uh, listen to the mother uh, they're always uh, pinching her uh, you know giving her a lot of pain and say two other children are there who are very obedient always uh, following the instruction naturally mother is of course equal to all she wants to um, do the best for everybody but whoever are following her whoever are you know naturally she will be you know guiding them because she can she has the rapport with them naturally she will be guiding them uh, in like that way for those other people who are naughty she might need to punish also sometime because that is the right thing for them right mother is not partial to one child versus the other she is equal to all she actually loves everybody but she has to respond in the way they reciprocate with her right so ye ye bhajanti tu maam bhaktya mai te teshu chapi ham Uh, but whoever renders service to me means acknowledging krishna's supremacy and being grateful to krishna one one who performs uh, you know recognizes krishna's position in devotion is a friend is in me and i am also friend to him krishna is there to guide them because he is looking for krishna's guidance others are not looking krishna is not actively involved he is like a neutral person he is like a judge judge is not partial or uh, judge is equal to everyone right? so paramatma is there in everybody's heart but for those who are rebellious who are you know uh do not accept the position of god or krishna for the matter uh naturally he is also reciprocating in the same way he the, he will let karma to act take its own course of action but for the devotees it's not like that krishna will be involved directly because they are always dependent on him just like a child who is dependent on uh, her parent for everything naturally the child will be protected child will be uh, supported as needed by the as um, you know as per his connection with the parent right yeah please uh, read mother ji this okay one may question here that if krishna is equal to everyone and no one is his special friend then why does he take a special interest in the devotees who are always engaged in his transcendental service but this is not discrimination it is natural any man in this material world may be very charitably disposed yet he has a special interest in his own children the lord claims that every living entity in whatever form is his son and so he provides everyone with a generous supply of the necessities of life he is just like a cloud which pours rain all over regardless of whether it falls on rock or land or water but for his devotees he gives specific attention such devotees are mentioned here they are always in krishna consciousness and therefore they are always transcendentally situated in krishna mm. so that is the position of devotees he is so he is equal to everyone this example is he is just like a cloud which pours rain all over regardless of where whether it falls on rock land or water he is neutral and equal to everyone but according to the person one experience the reciprocation land may become fertile rock may just uh, you know lose all the water it falls on it it goes waste so it depends on us lord is equal to all but depending on us uh, we get the uh, reciprocation hmm. अपिचेत सुदुराचारो अबिचेत सुदुराचारो भजन्ते माम अनन्य भाग भजते माम अनन्य भाग 
even if one commits the most abominable action if he is engaged in devotional service he is to be considered saintly because he is properly situated in his determination even if one commits the most abominable action if he is engaged in devotion service he is to be considered saintly because he is properly situated in his determination uh so this is uh it appears like you know devotees are special in this case even if one commits the most abominable action hmm? if he is engaged in devotion service bhajante mem ananya bhav sadhureva samanvat samantavya you have to consider him as sadhu hmm? uh he is to be considered saintly because he is properly situated in his determination hmm? if suppose somebody is engaged in devotion service and for whatever reasons he commits a bad action right because of you know past conditioning sometimes you know previous life conditioning takes over somebody and he acts in a bad way uh so in that even in that case because this person understands who is god who is what's my relationship with him uh Uh, he is still to be considered saintly we should not just uh, uh, ignore him as long as he is you know he is determined is properly situated in his determination so uh, so so that is the glory of devotion service meaning external act, acts uh, of course which are done unintentionally if somebody does intentionally then he is basically he is a you know he is a hypocrite we are not talking about that case if somebody because of you know uh, overwhelming conditioning because of bad uh, past conditionings somebody by mistake does some mistake uh, he should not be rejected right away uh, he is still considered saintly because he is bhajante mam ananya bhav he is he is actually understands the position of krishna and worships krishna right? uh, so that is the uh, one should not just think he is you know he is gone as long as he is properly situated in his determination yeah please uh, read arindya mata ji the word sudurachara used in this verse is very significant and we should understand it properly when a living entity is conditioned he has two kinds of activities one is conditional and the other is constitutional as for protecting the body or abiding by the rules of society and state certainly there are different activities even for the devotees in connection with the conditional life and such activities are called conditional hmm. yeah please continue besides these the living entity who is fully conscious of his spiritual nature and is engaged in krishna consciousness or the devotional service of the lord has activities which are called transcendental such activities are performed in his constitutional position and they are technically called devotional service now in the conditioned state sometimes devotional service and the conditional service in relation to the body will parallel one another but then again sometimes these activities become opposed to one another as far as possible a devotee is very cautious so that he does not do anything that could disrupt his wholesome condition he knows that perfection in his activities depends on his progressive realization of krishna consciousness sometimes however it may be seen that a person in krishna consciousness commits some act which may be taken as most abominable socially or politically 
but such a temporary fall down does not disqualify him hmm. so one should not uh, temporary setback some you know everybody especially those who are devotees they have their conditional life and uh, spiritual life and suppose he does something uh, incorrect politically or socially such a temporary fall down does not disqualify him Yeah, please read this one. On the other hand, one should not misunderstand that a devotee in transcendental devotional service can act in all kinds of abominable ways. This verse only refers to an accident due to the strong power of material connections. Devotional service is more or less a declaration of war against the illusory energy. As long as one is not strong enough to fight the illusory energy, there may be accidental fall downs. But but one but when one is strong enough, he is no longer subjected to such fall downs as previously explained. no one should take advantage of this verse and commit nonsense and think that he is still a devotee if he does not improve in his character by devotional service then it is to be understood that he is not a high devotee hmm. yeah, no one should take advantage of this verse and commit nonsense and think that he is still a devotee. so it's not that one can take advantage only accidental fall down more important thing is one should continue his devotion service in respect to of his weakness suppose one falls down one should not think hey, i am not qualified for devotion service devotion service is the purifying process as long suppose accidentally you fell down because of whatever conditioning you had in the past you should not think that devotion service is ineffective or um, devotion service cannot be done because i fell down one should not do that one should be more determined so that he does it. that is a key lesson kshipram bhavati dharmatma kshipram bhavati dharmatma sasve shanti nigachate sasve shanti nigachate kaunteya pratijani hi लास्टिंग पीस ओ सन ऑफ कुंती डिक्लेयर इट बोलली दैट माई डिवोटी नेवर Perish, perishes. Yeah, is the assurance of Lord Krishna. Even if one falls down, as long as he is fixed in his devotion service, he will soon again achieve this. Even if he will achieve again, he will fully situate himself in Krishna consciousness, and then also not only that, my devotee never perishes. This is very significant because he is making this promise through his devotee. Because whatever word he gives to his devotee, he will never break. That is his assurance. His devotee, whatever word he gives to you know Lord, whenever he gives a word, a promise to a devotee, he never breaks. That's why he want him to he want to speak through Arjuna. Oh, Sanna Kunti declared it boldly that my devotee never perishes. It's a bold statement. My devotee, I will always take care of. That's the assurance of Krishna. For example, in the Mahabharata war, I was explaining the other day. He had to. Uh, Lord has to break his own promise that he had to fight the war. Why? Because basically, you know. trying to help arjuna 
when he was almost finished in the fight against bishma bishma was so overpowering that day on the you know 17th day or you know 14th day i think he was so powerful that he was almost killing arjuna at that time lord krishna even though he promised that he will not be participating in the war he immediately tried to help you know tried to stop bishma by taking the wheel of the chariot and running against him so sometimes he may break his own word right? that is his word that i will be neutral to both kauravas and pandavas but he broke his own word but he will never break the word of promise given to his devotee so through his devotee he is declaring o son of kunti declared boldly that my devotee never perishes just take shelter uh, and i will i will always protect my devotees what is it this should not be misunderstood in the 7th chapter the lord says that one who is engaged in mischievous activities cannot become a devotee of the lord one who is not a devotee of the lord has no good qualifications whatsoever the question remains then how can a person engaged in abdom- abom- abominable activities either by accident or by intention be a pure devotee this question may just justly be raised the miscreants as stated in the 7th chapter who never come to the devotional service of the lord have no good qualification as is stated in Sri shrimad bhagavatam generally a devotee who is engaged in the nine kinds of devotional activities is engaged in the process of cleansing all material contaminations from the heart he puts the supreme personality of god head within his heart and all sinful uh, contaminations are naturally washed away continuous thinking of the supreme lord makes him pure by nature according to the vedas there is a certain regulations that if one falls down from his exalted position he has to undergo certain ritualistic processes to purify himself but here there is no such condition because the purifying process is already there in the heart of the devotee due to his remembering the supreme personality of god had constantly mm. so therefore continue therefore the chanting of hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare should should be, be con- should be continued without stoppage mm. Continuous thinking of the Supreme Lord makes him pure by nature. When we keep Krishna in our mind, Krishna is like like the sun. But as soon as sun comes, all the dirt on the land will dry up. Will get dried up, correct? Right? Uh, whatever dirt may we may create on the lands, right? Uh, you know there are so much garbage that people throw on the land the sun is such a powerful disinfecting uh, force that all the nonsense get dried out and everything gets clean if your door open all the you know your home becomes very uh, naturally lit and you know pure the reason is the power of the sun wherever there is sun there is no uh, garbage there is no nonsense similarly our mind is filled with so many thoughts so many fears so many anxieties so many depressing thoughts all of these things as soon as we keep krishna in our mind okay? as soon as we keep krishna in our mind mind becomes purified and uh, sanctified the whole process of krishna consciousness is in your mind as much as you can 
by doing so you will get away from all the other dirt in your mind right your anger lust uh, greed envy false prestige bad thoughts negative thoughts anxiety they cannot stay as soon as krishna is filled in your mind those things have to go away you can there is no there is no place for both there is only one one that will stay just like as soon as sun comes the dirt has to vanish they both cannot coexist forever it's just matter of time one will take over the other right so it's like that our dirt may be more if the dirt is too much it takes more sunlight to actually clean the dirt so similarly sometimes you know in a very bad conditions it may take a while to clean up but the process is fixed sometimes we, in in the process of cleaning we might fall we might do the same wrong things we were doing before but all of that is fine as long as you should continue to do this thing you, know, you continue to chant continue to keep the keep krishna in your mind continue to perform devotional service continue to attend temple continue to hear in bhagavad gita so as as much as you do it that much cleansing will happen in the mind you won't realize what is that right? but over a period of time you will see the change in your life right? you have to have the faith and continue to follow the process when we do that it will purify our mind right? this will see where as soon as you chant like this is, this will protect you the devotee from all accidental fall downs he will thus remain perpetually free from all material contaminations so it's like simple example right krishna replaced with sun as soon as sun is there all the dirt is there. as soon as you add krishna to your mind keep krishna in your mouth chant the krishna name krishna's name is not ordinary it is transcendental it is spiritual in nature it's not mundane name it's not like a uh, you chant uh, you know somebody's name trump 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 nothing will happen but when you chant krishna's name it has the power and potency we saw the video i shared in the chat right the power of uh, krishna's name is different so similarly when we chant when you keep and, and we, when we have faith in krishna and we chant so it will transform our mind and it will transform our heart so that's the main point discussed here so it will purify us even though sometimes we may fall we should ignore and continue to do more bhakti so that we want to clean our heart mm-hmm. mam hi parta vyapasritya mam hi parta vyapasritya yepishu papayonaya Though Devi of lower birth, women, Vaishyas, and Shudras can attain the supreme destination. Okay, so here don't mind the word woman here. It does not <laughs> need to mind the woman. Um, so, <clears throat> if you, I mean, in Kali Yuga, everybody belongs to this class. Kalau Sudra Sambhava. everybody is of the nature of sudra because the, there is no spiritual um, inclination in kali yuga especially the impetus is very low in kali yuga compared to other ages for example if you if we attend you know if we uh, advertise this class how many people will attend bhagavad gita classes right? if it is a movie or if it is you know, a fun party you will see 20 30 40 people there right that's the nature of kali yuga it's nothing to do with uh, anybody uh, so because everybody is considered kalo sudra sambhava uh, there is nothing specifically about men or vaishyas you know? 
in, in the previous generation uh, you know primarily men were men in the home is uh, spiritual guide for the family right all the men were if men were following their guru the entire family would follow the husband and everybody is krishna conscious that is how the previous ages the families were so in that sense uh, when when krishna says you know of a lower consciousness or a lower birth means lower consciousness in that sense so when it means what it means is uh, you know generally people who are more you know materially conscious for example vaishyas they are always looking at you know, uh, what is the profit you know vaishya by mercantile nature they are always looking at hey if i do this what is the profit that's why that is material consciousness similarly uh, if suppose you are going out as a family right generally mothers is you know ladies want to make sure they are you know dressed up nice so there is some bodily consciousness relative to men men do really don't care so much sometimes they do also care so in that sense there is more bodily consciousness whether it is you know for economics merchant mercantile class or women in general or sudras which is basically kaliyuga everybody in kaliyuga is sudras because they are not spiritually inclined uh, so these are considered lower but in the sense that uh, they are not spiritually inclined from the birth right in the previous ages uh, people were very spiritually trained from the young age and they used to pick up very fast like uh, is more the days of kumar or like 5 6 years onwards Uh, right now the culture is completely different uh, we are definitely not as spiritually inclined as the people of the past is especially so krishna is saying the power of holy name or the power of bhakti is so powerful if you take shelter of me my shelter is so powerful that even of people of lower consciousness right even they can be elevated so in in any, any other process one may not be elevated as much in spiritual consciousness but for those who perform bhakti for those who worship lord krishna even if one is of lower birth, even they can be elevated to the highest perfection right they can achieve perfect they get they can achieve the highest destination in this life by fully taking shelter of krishna right we have so many examples of the past of women like uh, meera bhai or so many in the do, or like gopis are all women right uh, vaishyas there are so many devotees who are vaishyas even sudras there are so many you know people devotees who are of you know sudra class but they achieve the highest perfection for example so tokara right? uh, so in this way it's it's accessible to bhakti is a democratizes the highest perfection for everybody meaning anybody and everybody can achieve the highest if they take shelter of bhakti as the process for achieving the perfection right they can achieve the supreme perfection uh, so one need not think that hey i am a sudra i am a woman can i highest perfection you don't need to worry krishna himself is promising they can high, get the highest destination just by practicing bhakti right? so is reassuring for everybody that uh, just because you are born in kaliyuga doesn't mean you can't get the highest perfection just because you are a woman you can't get no discrimination everybody can achieve the highest process of bhakti while other process for example um gnana marga or to practice gnana marga you know the the cut off is so high that one has to be uh, at least you know one has to be you know even to practice the beginning of the process one has to give up family life. 
so that is the only way one is qualified to uh, pick brahmacharya right? so it's not very uh, practical for everybody when gnan yoga ashtanga yoga is also not practical ashtanga yoga means yama niyama asana pratyahar pranayam dharana dhyana samadhi one has to go to a secluded place and meditate on the lord for how many people is it practical especially people living in uh, cities and you know uh, uh, in you know families it's not practical but bhakti is so powerful it's like a high power dose of injection if you chant every day holy name it is very powerful process it uh, purifies your consciousness and you know it keeps you fully surcharged with spiritual consciousness please read mathi ji it is clearly declared here by the supreme lord that in devotional service there is no distinction between the lower and higher classes of people in the material conception of life there are such divisions but for a person engaged in transcendental devotional service to the lord there are not everyone is eligible for the supreme destination in the shrimad bhagavatam it is stated that even the lowest who are called chandals dog eaters can be purified by association with a pure devotee everybody can be purified therefore devotion service and the guidance of a pure devotee are so strong that there is no discrimination between the lower and higher classes of men anyone can take to it everybody can take to it the most simple man taking shelter of the pure devotee can be purified by proper guidance I had a question, Prabhu ji. Yes, yes, my dear. So, uh, uh, this uh, in this verse, the woman have been mentioned as mm-hmm. as the lower birth, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, this uh, our society, the Hinduism, mm-hmm. it was a patriarchal society, right? Mm-hmm. So this is the reason that women were considered to be of lower birth. So. uh so how do we in the in the present scenario uh how do we come to terms with it because you know this um, it is just like uh, a healthy discussion that i want to have with you mm. i was in one of the bhagavad gita's class mm. uh the prabhu ji was saying that uh, you should not because diwali is uh, basically lakshmi puja right Mm-hmm. so the that prabhu ji was saying that uh, you should not even celebrate diwali you should not do lakshmi puja because what is lakshmi she is just sitting at the feet of uh, lord vishnu and just like pressing his legs so so i mean so that's what he said yeah, so i did not say anything but you know it was it was like i did not feel good about that yeah definitely that's not the understanding i don't know why he said that but uh, um, so <clears throat> here is the deal right first of all uh, lower birth is uh, is not from material perspective it is completely from spiritual perspective the more we are bodily conscious the more we are materially conscious the lower the birth is it's not about uh, who can earn money or who is you know who can do what um, that's not the level right so in the you know in the normal society right if, if you if you look at people around generally uh, vaishyas or sudras who are sudras means uh, it's not trying to trying to see uh, somebody down those who are more materially conscious that only material life is everything right uh, so that consciousness is a sudra consciousness uh, brahmanical means 
one who is it's not about caste again caste has you know caste system has spoiled everything and bhagavad gita doesn't actually talk about the caste system that is you know described varnashrama is way different than what people understand as you know the four varnas here it's not about you know brahmana trying to look down other other communities brahmana is brahma janati iti brahmana you can be a brahmana i can be a brahmana even if you are born in a you know uh, as a woman or or you know a sudra family doesn't matter if you know brahman if you understand who is brahman if you relate your life if you lead your life in relation to brahman right understanding krishna's position you understand yourself as a soul that is being a brahman right so in that sense whoever try, is trying to understand bhagavad gita or attending classes or you know performing bhakti they are not falling in these categories in these three categories first of all okay uh, it's not about this categorization is primarily for indicating people who are materially conscious more and more materially conscious right just like i was giving the example um, naturally you know women in general are more bodily conscious than men is that correct or not do you agree yes yes yeah. it is this is like more more and more in this society where women has to look young all the time exactly yes. actually the society is forcing the function on the women right uh, so that bodily consciousness but as you start now now you understand bhagavad gita now you understand you are not this body you are actually the soul this whole body is like a covering and it is temporary right and the soul keeps changing next life you can be man or you can be something else or you could be going to a different planet so you, you now you understand this whole philosophy you don't feel like you are you know this body is immaterial this body is a temporary uh, ground for me to play in this world right and i'll be using this body it's a having a body itself is a, is not a great thing first of all you have a body means you are here to fulfill your desires and uh, whether it is men body or women body it's equally bad it's a bad bargain but if you use that body in the service of lord right if you engage in chanting the holy name and attending temple attending classes attending doing some service to krishna you know helping in cooking or whatever raising good children who are krishna conscious if you do all those activities those are all spiritual and as soon as you consider yourself as a spirit soul you are not a woman you are not a man you are not a sudra you are above all of that you are actually spirit soul so this is a consideration for those who are lower i mean it's it's like saying the power of devotion service is so good that even it can bring up people who are bodily conscious that's what the whole meta point uh, that krishna is trying to orchestrate here because in society uh, people think that you know jnana yoga or dhyana yoga or ashtanga yoga these are the process and who is really qualified for it you know hardly any so krishna is you know democratizing the process of reaching the highest perfection through the process of bhakti that is the whole meta point about this it's not to show some people are down or lower level right first of all you are all here in this bhagavad gita bhagavad gita classes means you are actually spiritually conscious this even does not even apply to you right because you are beyond that right you are you already consider yourself as a spirit soul i consider myself as a spirit soul you consider yourself as a spirit soul so in that sense this is not even applicable for us and uh, you know the prabhu ji that explained you that you know uh, you know lakshmi you should not even worship lakshmi because she is sitting at the feet of uh, you know vishnu that is completely misunderstand because even lakshmi is the originator of a sampradaya lakshmi sampradaya or is also called ramanuja sampradaya the whole of south indian temples simhachalam tirupati you know kalahasti or simha uh, you know all these anavaram 
all these temples follow the methodology of given by Sri Lakshmi. Lakshmi is mm -hmm. the ultimate of the Sampradaya herself because she is a constant associate of the Lord and she knows the process of how to achieve perfection. She actually passed on that knowledge, wisdom, and the whole Sampradaya exists un under her line, right? So in mm -hmm. that line, uh, Ramanujacharya comes. He came like, you know, 2000 years ago, I think, 1000 years ago, I think, yeah. 1000 years ago, he came and, you know, he asked, he started, reestablished the whole process which was given by Lakshmi Devi. So definitely, I know, there is, you know, worshipping Lakshmi, we see Lakshmi Devi as the best, best devotee, right? So we want to seek her blessings and we want to follow in her footsteps so that we can get the blessings of Lord. Never uh, you know, uh, misunderstand that. Yes, Prabhuji. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you for asking that question. If you have any such questions, you know, always. So this was a very good discussion uh, you know, about this uh, patriarchal uh, society that you know, we, we are used to. In fact, now it is more patriarchal in the sense that women need to be, you know, always looking nice. You know, that is more patriarchal. In the original, you know, Vedic society, when things were all good before Kali Yuga, I'm not talking about Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga, um, things have degraded, you know, since 5,000 years. But before that, uh, you know, women had high, uh, you know, respect. Because of great women, great kings have come to this world. So in that sense, they have a very highly respectable position and they were seen like that. Yes, Prabhu, you are right that the society has become more patriarchal. Because women, when in original society, women had a place of respect at home. But now they, they are struggling. Not all of them, but many of them. They are working outside, they are working at home. So they are overworked and overstressed. That's so, really, actually. So, so far, yes. Far more responsibility is on the women now, actually. They earn and they also take care of the family and they cook and they clean, right? And yes. men get this advantage of, you know, being the men. They, you know, they just do work. They are doing the same thing as they were doing before. <laughs> and and yeah. previously, uh, the reason, you know, the society was organized like this, right? Men would go out, they would, you know, take care of the maintenance of the family. And women were sheltered. They were, they were emotionally and physically supported. Children were supported thoroughly. Women never felt bored at home. They had enough chores. There are no automatic machines and all. And they were building a good family in, at home. And uh, they were not focused on earning money because whatever husband earns, that was sufficient. Economy was not seen uh, like a threat to existence. In today's world, you know, to earn and to educate your children or to have a home, uh, you need all these things. It's a debt-based economy and uh, it's, it's not very healthy society right now. Unfortunately, women have to go out and they have to make money and uh, you know work so hard and they are actually stressed out far more than it was before. They had to you know go out, earn money, take care of family, take care of kids, and you know many times, sometimes you know they have a good supporting husband. That's great. Uh, otherwise, it's a real challenge. It's not easy. Yes, Prabhuji. You are and absolutely right. If they become devotee, if the whole family becomes devotees, there is a good chance that you know husband starts understanding because there is more empathy. They can relate to each other better with Krishna being the center of the family. That then things and situations will improve much better. But if they don't, then it's yeah, it's everybody has. You know, even in the home, it's like a hostel, right? Everybody is there for their own needs. <laughs> you know, husband. Yes, absolutely, Prabhu. You're absolutely right. Because your home should be like a temple, right? Yeah. 
because when every every person is respecting each other and uh, you are absolutely right yeah when we have bigger homes and hardly two or three people live in the home and everybody is on their own they do whatever they like to <laughs> it's in the past homes are small there are more members in the home like you have your parents and uh, you have your sometimes your brothers and their family they were all happily because there is not much ego clash and uh, you know the whole life was limited to a village and most of the living was self sustaining meaning they had a farm or they have some business and all of them together work and they run the business it was a very different society they had a lot of emotional support from their parents as well as their elder the younger brother would respect elder brother and they would feel sheltered right so there is a lot more happiness naturally because there is today like if suppose i have a problem i am like just living with my family and i get worked up right i do, i don't have anybody to speak <laughs> uh, immediately right like i my parents are in india and you know my sisters are in somewhere else uh, it's it's you know it's, it's not very healthy you know we may have physical health physically we are much better in position right you have a good home you know physical needs are satisfied but all these problems are getting into head right in the in the past the problems are less on the head they are more difficult at the physical level you need to earn money you have to go out work hard uh, but they were tired enough that they had a nice sleep when they come home they are the whole family is together and you know uh, they had fun time each one loves each other you know mentally they are relieved they had a good sound mind physically they were stressed out they used to work hard and you know make their ends meet now physically we are all good we can easily make money and uh, you know we have cars we have homes all of that is good but all the problems have went back to mind now mind is now full of anxiety because you don't know whether you have a job tomorrow or you are living too far and you don't know you know what is good for your kids you know or nobody is there to help you right uh, so stress is more moved towards mind and more mind stress is far more challenging it will ease you out it will give you diseases far more easily than physical problems physical problems are lesser problems actually mental problems are more uh, you know uh, what do you say uh, more stressful i would say right mental problems are more difficult to handle that's why in america i heard like out of every 10 people or uh, 3 or 4 people consult a psychiatrist uh, yes prabhu ji because uh, i have seen that uh, you know this uh, people here they don't like to live with other person because you have to make some adjustment to live with other people mm. so they keep a dog or a cat yeah they, and <laughs> it it is so weird and another thing that i wanted to tell you and i think everybody should know that here in us this is a new thing that i came to know if you are supporting your elderly family member mm. you get paid for that it is called home health aid so your own daughter or your own son or your own grand son or whatever can be your home health aid and they will be paid by the government to take care of you and still i have seen patients being neglected because they just take the money and they don't take care of their parents or grandparents it is such a sad scenario see the society we are living in <laughs> yes society we are living into so even it, it is not about money it is about the emotional connection because people can take care of their parents even if they don't have money right it is it is now now they get money and they use it for drugs they use it for alcohol hmm. so this is what is happening <laughs> so uh, giving money is not not solution like people making people aware like krishna consciousness is one of them it to solve this problem yeah education is most important without education if you give money of course they will use for all nonsense you know they have yes 
in the value system is more important than that's why you know we don't realize what we had in india is the best in the world yes yes in the in we yeah we had less material things but we were happier we were much much happier much, much happier yeah i uh, as a child i never worried about anything actually i remember now very well uh, you know it was so well taken care and now it's not like that you know nobody has time for others you know? <laughs> yes prabhu ji thank you so much <laughs> किं पुनर्ब्रह्मनापुण्यासुखम लोक इमं प्राप्य भज स्व Yeah, please read. How much more this is so of the righteous brahmas, the devotees, and the saintly kings? Therefore, having comes come to this temporary miserable world, engage in loving service unto me. Yeah, imam prapya bhajaswama, engage in my devotion service. Anityam asukham lokam. this world is declared by the creator as anityam asukham temporary and miserable why it is temporary because your body itself is temporary your relationships are temporary everything is temporary in this world right? except for your spiritual progress everything is lost in this world right? miserable why is it miserable anybody why is this world miserable because birth life uh, birth death disease and old age is what exists in the world yeah so birth old age disease and death these are going to be there for everybody everybody is born everybody has to go through disease everybody has to go to death so nobody can avoid and so it's a common problem for everyone what else exists in this world what other things cause problems hmm? anxiety greed lust anxiety yeah that is a good problem yeah greed lust yeah so they are all called adhyatmika kleshas adi atmika means within your mind uh, anxiety stress lust greed anger hmm? what else exists as a problem in this world pandemic is that a problem or not nobody asked for it but it came up and uh, natural disasters so many happened right earthquakes we haven't seen one here recently but uh, they would cause mass destruction right nobody floods chennai was flooded entire the state was you know people lost so much of wealth uh, there were you know gujarat what is it earthquake so many people wiped out so natural calamities huh? adi bhautika clashes adhyatmika adi bhautika and adi daivika huh? sometimes you know calamities because of other people you know it could be because of you know uh, your manager could be because of your in-laws it could be because of anybody outside your life could be because of mosquito anything outside you right so they can cause misery in your life so all these three types of problems exist the four uh, uh janma mrityu jara vyadi they are there uh, so because of all these things this world is a temporary temporary because its body is temporary miserable because of all these kleshas and you know the four important problems of life okay? so that's why it's called miserable world and who who says that it's like suppose uh, you are the manufacturer of a soap 
and you declare the soap, you know, the soap, if you use this soap, you're going to get skin disease. <laughs> the manufacturer of this entire creation is declaring about this world as temporary and miserable world. So if you so if you are trying to become happy in this world, right, through material means, what are the odds of you succeeding? Zero. Zero. <laughs> yeah. So if you have a you know some uh, utopian idea that I can be somehow very happy in this world by making more money and you know getting richer and getting better job, getting better position, think twice about it because that's not the one who, you know, that's not the declaration of the person who created this world is saying, right? It doesn't mean that you become neglectful about your profession or work or anything. You do your best, but do not over stress on that. Do not overwork on that. Do your best within the eight hours or whatever, and whatever time you have, engage in spiritual life, because that is your real bank balance. The bank balance you build in your in this world is going to go away. It may go to your children. Who are your children? You know? Next life, you'll have a different set of children, different set of husband, different set of parents, different country. You may think, oh, Mera Bharat Mahan, Next life, suppose you are born in Pakistan. <laughs> what happened to your slogan? Mera Bharat Maha. Don't be attached to anything. You know, It's all temporary in this world. Uh, understand, it doesn't mean that you become careless to anything. Uh, so, but at the back of your mind, think that what you do spiritually is the only thing that will carry on to your next life. That's the most important thing. And everything else, should support that. As long as it supports that, if you're earning, if your job, if you have any of position you have that supports your spiritual goal, it, it is appropriate. Otherwise, it's a, it's a detractor from your ultimate uh, goal of life. Right? So keep that in mind and uh, engage in loving service. Into me. That is the only um, rope to get out of this well of material existence, material, miserable, temporary existence in this world. Bhakti is the rope to get out of this dark, deep well of miserable world. If you don't catch that rope and hold on to your old ways of living, you will continue to exist in this material atmosphere forever. So the devotees and saintly kings in the past have followed this process and they achieved the highest perfection. Who are all those? Prahalad Maharaj, Dhruva Maharaj, Ambarish Maharaj, right? King Chitraketu, great saintly people. Huh? They're all great devotees also. Right? They were, you know, the rulers of the world. At the same time, they were the greatest examples of devotees to follow in their footsteps. Right? So they, you know, even if, even people of lower material consciousness can achieve this highest destination, what to speak of these great people who are sincere and righteous, they will definitely achieve. Just engage in devotion service. Don't worry about, you know, having come to this world so much. You have somehow come here. It's a bad bargain. But make the best use of it. Make the best use of bad bargain, they say, right? So you, you somehow have this material body. Engage in the right way so that you don't have to come to this world again. Right? You can't change your... You can't somehow escape to the spiritual world. Somehow you have it. Okay, accept it and engage in devotion service. That's the way out from here. Please read, Prabhu. 
in this material world there are classifications of people but after all this world is not a happy place for anyone it is clearly stated here anityam asukham lokam this world is temporary and full of miseries not habitable for any sane gentleman this world is declared by the supreme personality of godhead to be temporary and full of miseries mm. yeah this is arjuna was born in a saintly royal family to him also the lord says take to my devotional service and come quickly back to godhead back home no one should remain in this temporary world full as it is with miseries everyone should attach himself to the bo- bosom of the supreme personality of godhead so that he can be eternally happy the devotional service of the supreme lord is the only process by which all problems of all classes of men can be solved everyone should therefore take to krishna consciousness and make his life perfect mm. and this is the ultimate was man mana bhava mad bhakto man mana bhava mad bhakto madhyajimam namaskuru madhyajimam namaskuru mam evaishyasi yukta yuktaivam mam evaishyasi yuktaivam atmanam matparayanah atmanam matparayanah this is the only verse that is repeated twice in bhagavad gita except for the last line we we'll again see this in the last chapter as the final instruction also krishna gives this so why would krishna repeat an instruction if something is repeated what does it mean it's important yes so that we remember this is like a most important verse in bhagavad gita entire bhagavad gita it is definitely one of the top most especially for devotees let's read the translation who is the person to read this i can read hmm. prabhu ji no go ahead prabhu somebody was trying to read i think yeah anyone please or if anybody who hasn't read uma sajikar kumar mathe ji want to read ah uh, yes prabhu ji uh-huh. engage your mind always in thinking of me become my devotee offer obeisance to me worship me being completely absorbed in me surely you'll come to me hmm see krishna's assurance here again engage your mind always in thinking of me do not think of this that you know all of these things which generally occupy our mind become my devotee manmana bhav mad bhakto mad bhakto means become my devotee madhyajima madhyajima means become my worshiper offer your obeisances to me and worship me being completely absorbed in me surely you will come to me ah uh, mam evaishyasi means you will come to me for sure being absorbed yukta yukta means being absorbed so keep your soul dedicated to me if you do that you will definitely come to me so this is the trick of bhagavad gita you want to achieve the highest perfection keep fill your mind krishna as like i said is like a sun when there is sun there is no dirt and it cleans us everything so engage your mind always in thinking of me become my devotee offer obeisances to me and worship me being completely absorbed in me surely you will come to me so there is no higher assurance than this nobody here can assure you like this no other scripture such assurance exists very straight forward answer yeah so please read so whatever the iskon society is doing it is actually a practice of bhagavad gita right do you agree with that 
whatever the teachings of iskon is about you know teaching bhagavad gita hearing bhagavad gita chanting bhagavad gita, uh, krishna's name or worshiping krishna the recommended by bhagavad gita right so international society for krishna consciousness is actually fully practicing this principle that was given by krishna in this chapter towards the last verse and this is the one instruction that was repeated in bhagavad gita twice which means definitely it is the highest instruction yeah it's all to give us faith actually if you do this this is the result krishna is reassuring Please continue. Uh, in this verse, it is clearly indicated that Krishna consciousness is the only meaning. I mean, is the only means of being delivered from the clutches of this contaminated material world. Sometimes, unscrupulous commentators dis, uh, distort the meaning of what is clearly stated here: that all the devotional service should be offered to the supreme personality of Godhead Krishna. unfortunately unscrupulous commentators divert the mind of the reader to that which is not uh, at all feasible uh, feasible feasible such commentators do not know that there is no difference between krishna's mind and krishna krishna is not an ordinary human being he is absolute truth his body his mind and he himself are one and absolute it is stated in the krishna puran as oh, it is quoted yeah sure uh, so what <clears throat> so some unscrupulous commentators they say actually it is not to krishna but it is to the soul within krishna they say like that so somebody did the translation so prabhupada is trying to address that there is nothing like a soul within krishna krishna is absolute spiritual personality meaning his whole body is spiritual in nature it's not like a human being who has a body and a soul which is different our human body is material but the soul is spiritual but with krishna it is not like that he is a complete spiritual personality uh, many people you know do not understand the position of krishna they think that he is a great historical person or he is like you know a great yogi Uh, uh, people have so many kinds of interpretations about who krishna is but all the scriptures do not interpret the same way they take krishna as the highest god uh, like especially bhagavad gita you know the statements are so clear it's not it's not applicable to only arjuna the same instructions applicable to everybody uh, so So that that ends this uh, chapter. This is a very important verse. We can also memorize this. Man mana bhava mat bhato. Very important verse of Bhagavad Gita. Madhyaji ma namaskuru ma mai vishya si rupa. Atma na mat parayna. Very famous verse. Any questions or comments in what we discussed so far? Abhi, I had a question in one of the previous verses that we read today. Uh, they were mentioning nine types of devotional service. Mm. Uh, what are the like different types of service? Like, is there something that we have to do, uh, or is it just the nine Navabid processes called? They are all. Each of these are processes. One can follow one and achieve perfection, or one can follow one or more is fine. What are they? Shravana. Shravana means hearing what we are doing right now. So hearing about Krishna, hearing about Bhakti, hearing Bhagavad Gita, reading Bhagavad Gita. All of that comes under Shravana. Shravana means hearing. Shravana is the beginning. Right? First, until you heard about Krishna, you don't know about you know why you should chant Krishna. What is uh, what is the position of Krishna? Until that knowledge sinks into your heart fully, you cannot really worship with that. Uh, with that attention, right? So with that faith, so shravanam is the beginning. Shravanam, and then kirtana. Once you hear, you would chant. Kirtana means you speak. You speak Krishna katha. You chant the holy name because you have faith. You heard 
and so you have faith shravanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam once you hear once you speak vishnu smaranam he comes to your mind hmm? he comes to your mind and uh, whenever you are in anxiety you start remembering krishna right when you fall down you start krishna you would say huh? that's the right. default word you get krishna smaranam means remembering krishna whenever uh, you are in challenging times or you know uh, or in general also you can always try to remember absorb like the word the last verse we read that is krishna smaranam smaranam is a very high state of consciousness meaning you are trying to remember krishna always right shravanam and then once you remember you won't stop there you would engage in the service of krishna pada sevanam that's the fourth right shravanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam pada sevanam hmm? worshiping the lotus feet of the lord and then vandanam vandanam is praying praying to the lord uh one uh, uh shravanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam pada sevanam vandanam dasyam atmanivedanam okay. so dasyam means serving the lord you can serve in the temple you can uh, cook for lord you can dress lord you can worship lord uh, so many ways you can serve the lord right dasyam uh, atmanivedanam means offering your heart fully to the supreme lord right that's the highest stage uh, one can slowly get there one you know who completely dedicates his life like tukaram or mirabhai completely right? that's called atmani vedam one offers his whole self to the uh, satisfaction of the lord that's called atma nivedana so these are all the uh, navavida bhakti one can begin with shravanam that that's what we are trying to do and kirtanam chanting the holy name chanting you know songs of krishna uh, so these are the basic not basic actually they are themselves perfect parikshit maharas achieved highest perfection just by listening to sukadev goswami the whole of bhagavatam correct so shravanam in itself is fully potent process to achieve the highest perfection kirtanam alone is enough for achieving the highest perfection you don't need to do shravana you can only do kirtanam and achieve the highest perfection like for example tukara or mirabai they were always singing the glories of krishna anamacharya in southern india or um, so many no, tyagaraja they were dedicating their life for singing the word krishna right and in scriptures we have sukadev goswami who spoke bhagavatam and achieved the highest perfection so in this is shravana kirtana smaranam uh, akrura is considered the best person no, no not akrura smaranam is I'll, i'll i don't recollect uh, there are devotees who achieved perfection through one one of this link okay? dasyam hanuman ji he is the best servant of lord he achieved perfection by that make sense prabhu ji thank you bali maharaj to atmanivedana for example right? he offered mm-hmm. himself bali maharaj so in this way every uh, limb of devotion service can be uh, practiced any other questions if not we will begin 10th chapter next week hari krishna thank you all very much thank you prabhu ji hari krishna prabhu ji thank you prabhu ji hari krishna prabhu ji hari krishna prabhu ji